Hi, everybody. I always uh, want to start a talk by asking you a couple of questions. First of all, are you familiar with React? Yes? Please, hand. OK. And are you familiar with CSS in JS? Yeah. How many of you hate CSS in JS? OK. We're going to have stuff to talk about that. All right. And I'm going to try to change your mind after this talk. So this is called Flexible Styling for Highly Reusable React Components. And essentially, it is a tale on exploring a path for full customization, which is what I'm trying to achieve with all of the stuff that I'm going to show you now. My name is Javi Velasco. That's my Twitter handle. That's my beautiful dog. Um, and I work, it's worth mentioning that I'm working for a company called Audience. We are getting a product to get you uh, very powerful insights to drive your business. And I am also the author of a very popular uh, library, which is called React Toolbox. It is a library of React components that implement material design guidelines by using CSS modules in the version that is deployed today. But I am not very proud of that uh, particular decision that I took in this moment. But this is going to change. But anyway, the delivery is very popular. It has now like uh, almost 7,000 stars in GitHub. With, it's the second most important, uh, most relevant uh, GitHub project in Spain, which is cool. And also, it's being used by huge companies like Netflix. So we are going to talk about theming and customization. But before, I want to align with you on what I understand by theming and customization. Because I've been struggling with this during a lot of, a, a big period of time. Um, people want to use React Toolbox most of the times, and they appreciate how components are built. But for example, if they want to use the date picker, usually they don't really want to use that because it's material design. And the most common scenario is that you're going to have your own branding. So you need to customize a lot your components. And it's not that easy at the end, because you have to design this API for them in customization. And I was thinking, how can I give you a component that is really, really flexible, or really customizable? So I found like three different layers when we talk about theming and customization. First of all, it's theming. I call theming when you want to change something, like the color scheme, for example. You get all your components, and every component is, uh, has, is sharing like the same primary color, for example. And that's something that is very likely to be changed. So it's very easy to identify what variables do you want to change. So you can define like an API to change just a single value and to get a different flavor for all of your components. So that's something that is predictable. You can extract that in an API. So it's easy to change components. That's what I call deming. But of course, there is something else, which is a style customization. Say that you want to use the card component, for example. But you are finding that, that the title is very small. It is material design right now, but you don't give a shit about material design, so you want to make it bigger. That's something that is not predictable. I cannot know. What do you want to change in my components? So I can't actually get everything out of the component and give you a declarative API to change all of that stuff. That's not possible. So usually, you are relying in the technology, the styling technology that you're using to style the component, and how it's going to be overridden at the end. And if you're using CSS, which is the most common scenario, you have to rely on, priority, on selector priority to write Mm, selectors with higher priority, so you can add your own rules and overwrite the original ones. So that's actually a bit fucked. No, you end up like putting important everywhere. Everybody does that. But that's what I understand by style customization. It's something that is not predictable, but you are going to want, you, you, you'd want to change at the end how stuff is looking, right? And render customization. This is overlooked by most people building vendor components. Um, imagine that I have this date picker, and the weekdays are shown with the capital letter, for example. And you think that your users are stupid or whatever, and you want to put their the whole weekday, you know, the, the, their whole name. So is that even possible? How can you do that? I mean, your abstraction, what you are actually getting, is a full component that is painting this month 
with the days and stuff. And you want to change how a particular piece of that component is rendered. That's customization too, right? The only thing is that what you need to use to get that customization is not changing the style, but changing, but changing the content, changing how the component is rendered. So that, that's for me like the third level. So you have the ambient style customization and render customization. And any component that is uh, customizable at these three levels can be taken anywhere you want. You can change as much as, much as you need. So that's the key. That's what I want to keep with this. Okay? But before getting into uh, the you know, specific parts, I want to speak about how React is facing styling. So how do you deal with styles in React components? We were taught that a component in React is a function of a state. You can consider a component as a function. You pass some state, and it's going to generate a, a view, right? a bunch of HTML with content and stuff. That's OK. All of that is in JavaScript. Do you remember back when we had this separation of technologies? It's not separation of concerns. We have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? Not anymore. Now with React, we have only CSS and JavaScript because we are no longer writing HTML, right? The HTML is generated by the component. We are telling how do, you want, do, you, do we want to generate that HTML. But what happens with the CSS? React is not taking care of the CSS for you. So what you do is to assign some class names that are going to be matched after all, right, with the browser. And if something happens and you need to change how the component is looking, what you do is to update the HTML to change styles. You are updating the HTML because you're changing the class name. But that doesn't make sense. What you want to change is the style, not the, not the I mean, you are making this round up because of the technology because it's not providing you with mechanism that, a mechanism that allows you to change the state and change directly in your implementation uh, styling, right? So you have the CSS apart from your JavaScript. And that CSS is linked with the view using class names. So you have to match class names with your styles. Now, picture that you want to get Deming for CSS, traditional CSS. How could you achieve that? It's not possible with CSS as it is. In the future CSS, we are going to have these um, custom properties, for example. That's going to allow you to have these shared variables all across your style sheets and, and you know, change a variable in one place, and then you get the different flavor for all of your components. But that would be in the future. You never know. Right? But today, if you use your CSS, this is not possible. You need to pre-process that. You can use less, SAS, post-CSS, whatever you want. But the thing is that you have a building step. You need to define the class names, the, um, the attributes, and then transform all of that into a CSS that is going to be consumed by your components. That's OK if you are building a platform and you have control over everything. But if you are a component author, or you are providing components to the community, like with, this happens with React Toolbox, you can't follow that strategy. Because you are forcing people to set up stuff. In React Toolbox, for example, I would say that 75, 80% uh, of, of the issues are related to configuration. Because I'm requiring people to process the CSS with variables, because that's the only way to get um, to get customized style sheets, right? So that's what you can you can't force people to install anything and to 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 customize to to make a complex setup with Webpack, for example. And also, style is a function of the state. If you if you think about that, say you have a toolkit component, a component that when it's clicked is going to change, right? So you click the component. It changes the internal state, and you want it to look different. So you change the HTML, but it's not the HTML what you want to change. You want to change the style, right? So style is a function of state, as it happens with the HTML. So my question for you is, can we handle CSS as React is doing with HTML? Can I 
declarative in my declaratively in my um, JavaScript say I want this component to look like this and depending on these properties I want it to look like that whatever so my component is rendered and the CSS is generated injected updated and changed as the state changes right so React is not doing that for us but there is CSS in JS CSS in JS is causing uh, a huge fatigue. We have like, I don't, I don't know, like 20, 30 different libraries to do the same thing. They are all trying to solve the same problem. But to tell you how CSS in JS can uh, fix this uh, deming and, and customization issue, I'm gonna focus on style components in a nutshell because actually that's my favorite solution so far. For me, it has the best API right now. Are you familiar with style components? So, so, okay, you're gonna love it. So, here you have an example on how uh, uh, style components work. So you have this styled uh, module that you can import, and it's going to have like a bunch of methods or functions that you call to generate components that are going to render to a single tag name. So for example, in this, in this uh, slide, you see style.a. That's going to return a component that, 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 and when that component is rendered, it's going to generate an anchor tag, okay? That syntax is weird. Did you, saw, did you see that, that syntax before? When this gets transpiled, it is a function call at the end. So a is a function actually, and you can consider this as a piece of CSS, a representation in JavaScript of a piece of CSS. So you are actually calling that A function with a piece of CSS. So when the component that is returned, this button component, gets, gets rendered, it's going to attach the library for you. All of the CSS is, with, is going to be updated and injected in the site. And what is interesting is that you can interpolate with this syntax a function that receives the props that the component is getting. So you can do stuff like this. You can, you can say, if I am getting a primary property that evaluates to truthy, I'm going to return this piece of CSS. And since it's an, it's an interpolation at the end, the properties that you add at the end are the ones that are gonna get priority, but not, bro not browser priority. You're not messing up with selectors anymore. You are just telling wo what rules should be applied to this component in particular. So that allows you to generate components that are only concerns about styling. So if you use something like style components, I'm talking about style components, but this is valid for other alternatives. This API is being implemented by other uh, CSS and JS libraries, like, for example, Glamour or, <laughs> or Fela or whatever. There are so many of them. But at the end, you are using style components as primitives. Instead of rendering a button element or a non-core element, you are going to render components that are generated by you and they are style components. So here's how you can use that button that we generated. But on the other hand, if you are using React elements as primitives, that would be the button component. So you have to calculate what's going to be the class name for that component to know uh, how it should look like. It's way more difficult, right? So if you compare those two, in the first one, a style is not bundled, it's linked using class names. So you are responsible for in, from inserting that CSS, and if it's not matching, you're not getting any insight. You just don't style the components. But with style components or CSS in JS in general, you are bundling styles with the component. That's pretty handy. Also, you are mapping state to a combination of class names, but in, on the other hand, with side components you, or, or any other CSS in JS, you are actually passing properties to those components. With, it feels more natural. And also, in CSS, as I said before, there is no built-in strategy for deming. But with CSS in JS, since you are generating those components uh, uh, 
from the JavaScript, each library can define its own way to provide them in. Inside components, it's very easy. We're going to see that in a minute. And it happens exactly the same with overriding styles when you need to customize something. You are not relying into priority or selector priority or in the browser anymore. Now you just rely on JavaScript and how the library is implementing that overriding. For example, for style components, it's just about interpolating styles at the end right, of the function call. So how can you solve them in a style customization with this thing? Remember this slide, right? So about Deming. Deming is really, very, very, very easy with style components. Here is the button example that we just saw. So you can interpolate a function like that. And you are assigning the color that you're getting in an object in a DIM property. Obviously, you have to pass that DIM property to work. But the pattern that style components implements is the context provider pattern. I'm sure that if you know React, you are already familiar with that, with Redux and stuff, like the provider at the, in the app root, right? So you can use team provider like that, pass that object, and it's going to be automatically injected in the style components, right? It's that easy. So now you have a button um, that is actually dimmed. And the best part is that this is reactive. If you change that life, it's going to re-render with a different a dim value. That's cool. Okay. And also, the side customization is very easy. SI Components is giving you an API for overriding, but I'm going to focus on a different approach because it, I think it's, it's going to be handy for, the, the, for something that I want to explain later. Say that you have a property called styles that is going to receive a representation of CSS that gets interpolated inside that template tag, right? Something like that. That means that if I want to change a button, the styles for a button, for example, I can generate that piece of CSS with the CSS function that comes from style components too. So here, instead of generating a component that renders to something styled, I am getting a representation of that CSS. And later, I can call my button passing that piece of CSS. So basically what I'm doing here is getting a component and overriding those styles <clears throat> in a very easy way that is predictable. And you can be sure that the result that you're getting is not messing up with the browser or whatever. You know that that's going to work for sure. But what about a complex component? And this is why I am focusing on this approach. Say that you have something very complex, like a date picker, for example. It's my favorite example. And, and you want to change a particular day. How can you do that? I mean, with CSS, you can write a selector, but the selector usually depends on class names or the structure of the, of the date picker, right? So you can't really rely on that because it's like a separate file and stuff. It's not easy. And also, the, 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 the priority should be higher, right? So in this example, you have a component that is composed by two different nodes, two different primitives. I'm using a wrapper component and a count component. Okay? So those two components should be customizable. So what I'm doing here is passing a styles object that is going to have a um, property that is named as the primitive. This, it can be named anything else. Okay? But just for, for, for this example, I'm calling it in the same way. It's easier. So what you pass here is an object with the CSS that you want to use to override each node in your component. Okay? So a complex component will have a lot of different nodes. So you can do something like this. Generate your counter, passing those CSS, and then you can render your component just like that. Right? And that is going to give you a customized counter. You don't need to know the implementation details, but the nodes that it is using. It's like exposing a different API. It's exposing a different API in the sense that you are telling this component is composed by this primitive, this primitive, and this primitive. And if you want to overwrite styles for each of them, you have to pass an object with the styles for each of them. Right? So that solves style customization too. And now the difficult part, which is rendering customization. So this same example, 
I am using, as I said, two different primitives, which is wrapper and counter. I'm, when you consume this component, you are going to probably import that as it is, right? But you don't care about wrapper or and counter. You don't know how are they styled. But imagine for a second that I want to turn this to be completely customizable. So I can extract that wrapper and count into arguments for a factory function. So instead of defining a component, I'm going to define a factory of components. Okay? So I'm not writing a counter anymore. I'm writing a get counter. I pass those primitives and I generate my component. That allows you to do anything you want because wrapper and count can be replaced with any other thing. Is that right? Yeah? That could be anything. So later on, if I want to create my custom counter, I can just call the function, pass in some primitives there that are very easy to create using style components. Right? So that can be anything. It's a primitive now, a style component, but it can be a very complex component. For example, you can take this, you can define a, a, a component with those primitives, and then if you want to use that in React Native, you pass different primitives. Because the most important difference between the two is that in, on web, you're using divs, spams, stuff like that. But in React Native, you have text, views, right? So you can, pass, you can go from this component, from this component, which is using a div and a span, to this other component that is using a view and a text. And the internal implementation would be still the same. But there is a problem with this. What happens if I want to change the background, for example, when the, when the, the count is higher than 10? Go back to that example. I don't know how, what, what's the count in this case. Because the rendering inside, the comp inside of the component is passing a set of specific properties. So that should be customizable too. And I found this pattern to be something very, very useful. You can pass a function that is supposed to return an object that you are going to use to pass new properties to each node. So that function can be called with the component, with the node name. Let's say that, like node name. So you are getting wrapper, pass through, and passing the name of the node, which is wrapper in this case, and the original properties that the counter is receiving. And the same for count. So this allows you to write a function like this, where I am saying, if the node name is wrapper, I want to pass an additional property, which is going to be counter, right? And I can use that in my factory. So now I can not only inject custom components, but also tell how those should be orchestrated, like communicate between each other. So you inject custom components, and you can make them richer. You can add new properties to those components that are not taken into account in the first place because you can generate your custom component that is taking a full property that is not in the original component, but then you can use that internally to generate one thing or another. So that gives you full customization. You can add new properties. But you have to respect the API in a sense that if you say that an internal node needs to receive uh, a couple of pro specific properties, the component that you're passing should respect that, should consume those properties. But at the end, you're getting full customization with this because you can change rendering, styling, and deming. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to give you like React to box with factories. That would be crazy on my side because it's a complex implementation. That is for very specific use case use cases when you need, for example, to, to, to build your custom date picker. And I can give you, but the idea is to separate uh, in React Toolbox a core package and a React Toolbox package. So you get a, like a bunch of well-designed components and then a material design flavor. And I've made a couple of examples of this that I didn't make public yet, but I'm gonna show them right here. I'm always speaking about this date picker, and it's because the proof of concept is a date picker at the end. And it is a date picker 
because I've, I, it turns out that this is like the most difficult component, the most complex one. I had something to life code here, but I think it's not the proper moment to do that. Okay, so this is a React Toolbox Date Picker. It's the same. If you go to the React Toolbox site and, 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 and see the Date Picker, you're going to see that material design. Just It looks like in your mobile phone. The core logic is exactly the same. I'm using that pattern that I just showed you. And this is working very, 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 very nicely. And you can say, what? Well, it's OK. It's beautiful. It's a date picker. It's replicating the Airbnb styles, by the way. But what if I, told you, what if I tell you that this date picker here is exactly the same. Isn't that awesome? This is React Native, OK? This is a native application. And it, is the, it shares the same logic, exactly the same logic. Internally at Audience, we are using a date picker, which is exactly the same date picker as this one, but with a completely different styles. So I think that this is all. I wanted to tell you today. I wanted to do some live coding, but maybe later if you want. <laughs> okay? So, that's all. <laughs> and now and now please ask questions. Ask questions mostly about CSS in JS because I like the run. I don't know if you have to wait for the mic or you one can speak louder or something. No questions? No. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't believe you. You have to you have to ask stuff. Uh, only <clears throat> sorry. For me it's uh, too difficult to follow some uh, speeches because I not see the, yeah. the slides, so yeah, I, know. I would like to see if you think to to publish in GitHub in another repository. Of course, the, the code that you have been showing yeah, here. Yeah, of course. In fact, in fact, uh, in my GitHub profile, okay. there are a couple of. Um, yeah, sorry. Let me close this for a second. You have the the proof of concept of this is actually public. Okay, great. So, in my GitHub account, I think I have a couple of repositories. Like, yeah, React Toolbox Airbnb native is the, na the React native implementation using this React Toolbox core stuff. Okay. And also you have this React Toolbox Airbnb, as it is, which is the, the web implementation. And in React Toolbox, I have a branch which is called like an agnostic TypeScript, I think, mm -hmm. that is implementing the, the, the core. Okay. So if, if all of this is possible. The only thing is that it's not really shared yet. I have like 20 stars, almost 20 stars, but I didn't even tweet it. <laughs> yeah, it, okay. you, can, you, you, can, you can go there and check the code, definitely. And also the slides, and I can publish the slides too. OK, you want. okay. thank you very much. <laughs> I know a couple of you some talked before that you are like CSS in JS haters or something. <laughs> So it's your chance to, to speak about it. Uh, thank you. Uh, great talk. Um, I have a question. Uh, I'm working in a React project. Uh -huh. um, we are using SAS instead of uh, styled components. Uh -huh. um, we have a, a, a button, uh, a, a button yep. that uh, has a very lot of uh, states. Of different states, mm -hmm. disable or, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and with stylist components, how can you deal with uh, long um, CSS? Uh, because the CSS is very large for sure. this uh, button. Sure. You you can split the um, the CSS you have uh, because the examples in the web. Um, 
in your presentation are with uh, very little blocks yeah. of CSS. Yeah, definitely. You can, yeah. For example, say you have this. Give me a sec because I want to open this. Is this the last talk, actually? Yeah. 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 So we have time, huh? <laughs> cool. What I'm, you know, the worst part about giving talks is that you have to measure the time. And I like to speak, like, a lot. And it's very difficult for me to measure. Sorry, I think you have 55 minutes still, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks, thanks you later, but, yeah. Cool. OK. So here you have, for example, this. Uh, I made this example yesterday. So this is a component. Which is called toggle button component. Javi, yep. Enlarge the font, please. Okay. Better? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You have this. Whoa. Shit. Yep. Okay, that's all. So, this is a regular component. It is using CSS uh, that is imported here to be bundled. Just for that, it's not using CSS models or anything. And the, CS, the CSS for this has two classes, two class, uh, a class named BDN and BDN active, which is like the modifier, right? So to turn, to make this into a style component, I can import style. And what you do is to create your primitive in the same file, usually, or you can do it in a different file, but I like to do it in the same file. Thanks to hoisting, you can declare here your button node, styled, and then just grab this code, put it here, this code. And instead of this, BTN active, we are going to get a different property, interpolating here like Props, props, active, and then CSS. Oops, like no, not no need for that. There's no need for this. Like this, and then what you do is to render that primitive, that button node. You forget about the class name, don't need it anymore, and then map the internal state, which is active to the property that you're defining. So it could be something like this, like active, active. And then button node and import the CSS. I forgot about it. So styled, sorry, button. There you go. So it works, right? So you can remove now the CSS. What is cool about this is that you can get this component here and extract that into a different file, for example. So if your component is very complex, you can create every different primitive in different files, See if that's better for you to organize yourself. But also, if you want to reuse these pieces of CSS of, or, or even split that into those different states, a pattern that I like is to say, like active button, right? And then you create that piece of CSS with the active styles. So it could be like this, right? Or even better, you can define a function, active button. It gets some props, and then you say if props active, then I'm going to return this piece of CSS. Yeah, you can split exactly. For every modifier, for every property, you can just extract a different function and interpolate that function here. It could be like active button. Right? Cool. And also you can use comments here. <coughs> so you can say, this is for the 
when a button is whatever thing and stuff like that. And also, this code can be split into different pieces of CSS, right? And it can be even added into different files and exported, imported, reused, and stuff. So I think that's Thank you. That's okay. Cool. <coughs> More questions? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Haters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Oh. Howie, thank you okay. so much. Okay. No, no. Thank you.